like, why does he fucking walk so funny? Can lift up this foot. Can't lift up the left foot. Why? Uh, nerve damage. Doctors think I had a stroke before I was born. It kind of sucks. <laughs> Uh, sure. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> I like your shirt. Exactly. Nice. Got it. All right. Thank you. People probably think I'm like somebody I'm getting filmed right now. <laughs> Should I look at the camera at all? Like, should I be like, this is my journal, like, that kind of thing? Or should I just, like, talk like I'm talking to nobody, or? Talk like you're, you're, you're kind of talking to me. And I'm kind of talking to myself, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I think I read the book Miracle Morning. I've tried, I've tried reading that book and then starting journaling, like, five different times in my life. And I never was able to stick with it. And I finally did it this year. Actually, the older journal. Oh, yeah. This is the OG one. This yeah, is damn. Two years later. The only thing really consistent about my life is that I rarely stick with things for very long. I wish I had finished my Amsterdam journal as those memories will only fade with more each day. What a sad thought. Anyways, I just picked this up for the first time in a while and it's exactly two years from my last entry. So what's new in 2017? Chloe, my dog, just passed away and the Jacks are trying to figure their shit out. I wish future me could give myself advice right now. Um, but then I started August 25th, 2020. It's been a while. Where's the time gone? Last time I wrote this, I just graduated from USC starting the band. I now write this entry as a 26 year old living alone in Echo Park, drinking coffee out of a Sunset Sound mug. Same mug. Uh, and about to head to Vernon to work on music to get the label to sign off and release. COVID-19 ran train through everything this year. Uncertainty with the future is something I'm learning to live with now. Feeling more uneasy with my age each day, we don't progress as a band. It took me essentially five years to finish this first one. And then I got a next one and then finished this in six months. We needed to do everything to get where we are today, but us self-producing our debut album is my life coming full circle. A culmination of my entire adult life and the opportunity I've always wanted. This is a perfect storm, a best case scenario. I think we produce Alibi, Waiting for the Moment, Runaway, so familiar, leaving, lose it, to the best that we can go and shop it around the world. The new Jacks. This is 2020, this is us. On a completely new note, Demitas Coffee is one of the best cups of coffee I've ever had. <laughs> Nothing happens, not now. The past creates identity, ego, and the future creates hope or anxiety, all of which are illusions. <laughs> I love it like alternates between like mixed notes for Runaway, and then like on a more positive note, all I have known is ever past. <laughs> Wednesday, gone serving. That's probably my favorite one. Actually, when I moved in, I made it a point to try every single coffee place within walking distance, and I decided that this was the best coffee, and it's also conveniently located directly under my building, so. It's like I'm getting paid for an advertisement for this thing. How's it going? I'm good, I'm good. Good, can I get uh, two iced coffees? I lost my stamp card. I was on the last one though, you don't have to trust me, but. <laughs> they all say that. I get two identical coffees every single day, because one's not enough. <laughs> Literally, it's so good. I'm crazy, Echo Park Time Travel Mart. Evil robot memory eraser. Even the best robots go bad. Yeah, it was closed up for the longest time and then I walked by it one day and saw this and I was like, what the fuck is going on here? During uh, COVID when everything was shut down, I would literally bring a beach chair out here and sit and eat my lunch and watch the trains go by. Find your beach. <laughs> we've, uh, we've had this studio for like a year now. Originally, it was more of a live room. Scott used to stand here. Josh was over here. Johnny was kind of in the center. I was, uh, I was over here. 
and the table was over there. And then as we kind of got through the pandemic and everything, we were playing less live shows, obviously. And we ended up starting making the record kind of like even accidentally. Um, I actually always have this fear because I have this backup drive here that's like plugged in. I'm definitely backing up everything, but uh, I think if the studio burned down, the drive and the backup driver here, which isn't good. What if you got a computer crash on camera? It's probably my favorite song we have on this album. Johnny came into the studio and was like, whoa, what is that? I was like, I was just fucking around with this. And I remember we just did like a little voice memo freestyle for a while, like, I don't know, four or five minutes, and this melody came out. Yeah, I think the reason I like this song so much is because it really is like the epitome of what I feel like I went through as a songwriter producer in the band and like in my own life, because like I grew up idolizing Led Zeppelin. Like I play guitar because I wanted to be freaking Jimmy Page. Yeah. I thought that like, you know, even producing Jack's demos early on and stuff, it's like the only way to do that was to be this like insane live band and capture that in the studio, kind of like Zeppelin did. And like, you have to capture the band playing live in the studio in one take. And then I went through like an EDM phase in college where I put down the guitar for like a year and I was just obsessed with EDM. And I was just making all this electronic music. And then looking back, I was like, why the hell did I do that? Like that was such a waste of my time. No, here, Thomas LaFleur. This is gonna sound like terrible now, but this is me first trying to make music. Like, <laughs> I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Anyways, so I liked freaking Zeppelin, Beatles, Pink Floyd, Eagles, all that stuff. And then I would make this. And I was like, oh, these are two separate worlds. Like I would never put a synth in a Jack song. I would never even record the jacks to a click. Like I wouldn't, I was very, very like purist. And then honestly, like a, a lot of props to Johnny for kind of like breaking through that, that paradigm I had. But like now it's kind of like, how much can I mesh the worlds? You know, like I think that's what makes it cool too. Cause it's like, you have this groove, which is pretty freaking electronic. <laughs> But um, that's probably the reason I like this song so much is just because it represents that and like my own personal journey through producing and not believing I could even produce a Jack song and then, you know, took out these barriers and these boundaries that I had I'd created for myself. Um, I think also to breaking through the idea that like everything had to be perfectly recorded. I definitely had that attitude, but there's, you know, there's acoustic guitars in here that were recorded as the demo with like a metal band playing next door, like. There's like so much hiss and noise on these recordings and it's like literally me playing on this. It's my first guitar I ever got. This is a $69 guitar from Guitar Center that my grandma bought me. Like it sounds pretty thin and hollow, but that works in the mix. Yeah, I mean, I see the most important part you want to know is where the vocals were recorded. They were literally recorded through an SM7B with Johnny sitting right here in front of the computer. I had to put my laptop under the desk because the fan noise is too bad. But yeah, that's that's the pro vocal setup. But yeah, everything on the record was like recorded in this room. This bass, we also had Scott's bass here. He has a P bass, so it's like either one of these. The, the drum sounds are like a combination of literally this overhead recorded in this room and then some samples underneath. Um, depending on the song, sometimes it's more samples, sometimes it's more overhead. Um, sometimes we'd overdub like just hats or something just to get, you know, paint with different sounds. Like sometimes you want the electronic kick and snare and real hats or vice versa. But um, the guitar setup we have is, I have my Les Paul, a Strat, uh, Dan Electro 12 string. It's actually kind of cool. I had, these all actually have a story behind them like this. I got in on tour in either Seattle or Portland. I don't really remember. I think it was Seattle after we played that that one party, remember that? And then this guy I got from Sam Plecker. He's the guitarist of Vista Kicks. I mean, most of the clean sounds were the Strat through this. So like, I Wish Guitar, 
mess them in guitar. This guy's a little bit more raunchy. This was like some solo parts. Uh, like the, the post riff section in Mess I'm In, I'm trying to think of other, just kind of like more zippy lead parts were recorded through this. And then this is my main touring amp. Again, trying to be freaking Jimmy Page. Uh, this is a vintage Supra Thunderbolt. I think it's just like a 1964. The table's the funniest part. It's like a fucking $15 Target table. Eventually we'll upgrade that. Discuss the key ideas of Einstein's special relativity. Jung's life in Zurich, in other what words, is, this? is similar in many ways to the modern audiobook. I'm going through deep work. It's about limiting distractions. Big old headphones. Honestly, maybe we do another ice cop. The hummus, the basil pesto, and the Cali dip. Cali dip's the best one. Yeah, so good. I'd highly recommend that. It's good. I just put my 30 days in today, so I'm definitely sad to move out. I have a great setup here, but um, I'm also ready for a change. I feel like if anything, this past year, with the band specifically too, just like getting used to change is something that was really hard for me at first. And I feel like I'm getting better at it, but it definitely is weird, you know, even all the iterations of the band that we've gone through being like more classic rock, I always think, what if I chopped off a finger and could never play guitar just with that one motion? We kind of went from re just rehearsing in that studio to making these demos that became less demos and more more full full songs. And we're like, we're like, hey, we don't want to re-record these parts in some big fancy studio again. Like, we want it to sound exactly like this. And I think my mentality has always been like, oh. I make the band demos, but I would never make the actual record. You know, to make a record, we have to go to Sense and Sound, work with the best producers, have good preamps, good mics, good room, get great acoustic drums, like all these things that I was kind of brought up believing. And then, again, a lot of credit to Johnny. He was like, we're gonna make this record on your laptop. And I was like, dude, there's just no way. Like, you don't know all the shit that goes into making a full-blown record. Like, there's no way that we're gonna make the record on my laptop. And then, you know, you keep going, keep plugging away at it. And then eventually the demos got closer to songs. We got better at making the parts sound exactly like we wanted them to sound. And eventually it got to the point where I was like, wow, this actually could be a record. It's also funny because we said we would never play with backing tracks or even record with click tracks or use vocal tuning, all this stuff. And all that's changed. It's like now we're kind of open to anything. So who knows, maybe maybe Johnny will be running around with a headset and a fishnet, uh, like a fishnet onesie. Looking back, it's like, those are the, some of the best times I've ever had touring in that van with my best friends, like out of college. Like that was literally why we started the whole thing, it was just to tour the country. And now we've done that several times. It's like, it's pretty insane to actually look back and like heat check yourself and be like, wow, we've done some crazy stuff. Like if I told myself when I was 15, if I got, if I told myself I signed to a major label, recorded with famous producers in a famous studio, in a band, and then toured the country, I would like literally thought I've already made it. And in a weird way, I feel like I already have because I've got to do so much, but I'm currently sitting here so grateful for everything I've gotten to do and so hungry for everything else that's in the future and like, I feel like we've just, you know, we're 1% there right now. It's like we have so much that we want to do as the Jacks and as me individually um, in the music industry and just in like, in life in general, so. Wow, okay, this is, this is good for maybe released after the album, but uh, the whole album really is a kid trying to figure out his first love, his place in the world and a framework to build off of. It's his story, but it's the story of everyone in their 20s figuring out love. 
it's beautiful. I'm lucky to be a part of it. Then some days comes in. Some days is the passing of time, looking back older and trying to extract meaning from the situation. What did it mean? Was it worth it? Did I waste the best years of my life when it was all right in front of me the whole time? Which leads perfectly into levitating. I know I'm looking at the real thing. It's five years later, 50 years later, but this time we know what we want. Even with the band, we know slow dance is the real thing. It took us all this time to figure it out, but this is it. It's La La Land and an album. It's a concept album of singles. It's us. It's true and it all actually happened. It's slow dance because it's about enjoying the moment. The whole point is the dance itself. Not winning, not the end, not making it. The point of life is the moment. Life is the slow dance, and for the next year, my 2021 life's purpose is very clear to me. Make the world here slow dance.